guys today we are going to discuss the estimation of amino acid by nin hydrin method so here directly we are going to get into principle because uh, the discussion or the introduction part on amino acids you know well in advance how the amino acids are which are essential and which are non essential how many are going to dissolve in water and how many are going to dissolve in alcohol and etc and etc so here directly we will discuss the principle followed by principle the reagents required and followed by that the procedure and the protocol and followed by that is the calculation and the result now here principle is that when we are going to treat the amino acid in the high amount of the ninhydrin now when you are going to consider the all the amino acids are going to give the bluish color whereas the proline gives the yellow color complex so the ninhydrin is going to react with all the amino acids where the all the amino acids except the proline is going to give bluish purple color whereas the proline is going to give the yellow color complex now how does the ninhydrin is going to react that is by oxidizing the agent now here when it is going to oxidizing the amino acid it is going to decarboxylate decarboxylate the alpha amino acids and intensely it is going to create the bluish color product now when you are going to see this reaction this is the ninhydrin this is the ninhydrin where it is going to react with amino acid where the amino acid is going to separate the carbon dioxide that is the liberate the carbon dioxide and the amino so here when it is going to liberate the carbon dioxide or the decarboxylation is going to take place forming the new compound that is the hydrin dantin where it is going to give the aldehyde where amino acid is has been oxidized or going to be formed to the aldehyde now when you are going to see further the reaction is going to be like the ninhydrin on its excess amount is going to react with the hydridantin and is going to form a complex here at this bottom where we have shown that the proline is going to give yellow color and the rest of the alpha amino acids are going to give the purple color that is the bluish purple color where this will be the complex formed so here what you are seeing is the bluish purple complex now when you are going to consider this bluish color complex it is going to be measured calorimetrically at 540 or 570 nanometer so here we have mentioned two absorbances in certain labs it is as per the convenient either you can measure it at 540 or you can measure it at 570 nanometers now here this bluish purple color formed is chromophoric it is a chromophoric compound where it is also called as the romance purple by the reaction of amino acids in acid solution with ninhydrin here ninhydrin is also technically or chemically called it as the triketohydridane hydrate it is a triketohydridane hydrate is attributed to the anion of diketohydridylidine diketohydride amine diketohydridylidine diketohydride amine now here when you are going to consider in this complex you are going to find this complete dy da 
which is shortly called it as the DOIDI because of the pronunciation difficulty. So this will be this particular complex is called to be as the DYDI. Now this is the reaction which is going to take place to give a particular bluish purple color for all amino acids except the proline. So this is what the principle behind the ninhydrin method of amino acid estimation. Further is the reagents required. Now here reagents required is preparation of the ninhydrin reagent and the ethanol which is a diluent solvent and the stock standard solution working standard solution for alpha amino acid and further is the acetate buffer to regulate the pH for a better reaction. So here when you are going to consider we can dissolve the ninhydrin in three different methods. This is the one this is the second and this will be the third. In the first method we are going to dissolve 0.8 grams of the stannous chloride in 500 ml of 0.2 molar citrate buffer with pH of 5 and you are going to add the solution of 20 grams of ninhydrin in 500 ml of methyl cellosol which is again called to be as the 2 methoxy ethanol. So here this is how you can prepare a particular ninhydrin reagent where stannous chloride is going to act as a catalyst where it is going to support the reaction of the ninhydrin with the amino acid and it is going to give a perfect reaction. Whereas the second method of the preparation of the reagent is to dissolve 2 grams of ninhydrin in 20 ml of the double distilled water to this add 25 ml of the 0.2 molar acetate buffer with pH of 5.5 and mix it with 4.5 percent alcohol. So this is the second method of the reagent preparation and the third method is 8 percent weight per volume of ninhydrin reagent where we are going to weigh 8 grams of ninhydrin and dissolve in 100 ml of acetone. So here we have seen three methods of preparation of the ninhydrin reagent. So here we are using this second method for our experiment. We are going to omitting these other two methods. So here we are using this second method which is quite uh, easy to prepare and also it is also going to give the nearly the same estimation results when compared to these two other preparations also. Now when you are going to consider a diluent, ethanol is a diluent, diluent is used to dilute the solvents or the whatever the uh, solvents which has been used within the experiment where it is going to help to reduce the or dilute the intensity of the color if the intensity of the color and it is going to make the solution appropriate for the readings now further is stock standard solution where you are going to dissolve 12.5 milligrams of amino acid glycine which is dissolved in 0.1 normal hydrochloric acid of 25 ml in a standard flask now here we have discussed in principle that acid solution in acid solution we are going to do this reaction now when you are going to consider when we are going to prepare the stock standard solution for alpha amino acids we are going to prepare is with the help of the hcl which is 0.1 normal hcl which is the acid where it is going to react or help in the reaction or it is going to become the basis of or the reaction of the alpha amino acid with the ninhydrin so here during the preparation of the standard stock solution we are using hcl of 0.1 normal where we are going to use it for 25 ml in a standard flask where we weigh 12.5 milligrams of amino acid glycine so further working standard solution we are going to take 5 ml of standard stock solution and make up to 100 ml in distilled water so the concentration will be 25 micrograms per ml further we are going to prepare a buffer solution 
where 0.2 molar acetate buffer with pH of 5.5 will be made where we are going to pipette out exactly 36.2 ml of sodium acetate solution into 100 ml of standard flask and add 14.8 ml of glacial acetic acid make the volume to 100 ml using distilled water so these are the reagents which are required for the to perform the experiment now further is the procedure this procedure what we have written in points one after the other this is the same which we are going to depict in the protocol so directly we are going to discuss the protocol as the protocol is going to show the same things so coming to this protocol slide here we are going to see the test tubes taken that is from blank to the standard series and to the sample sample as t1 and t2 and uh, in labs while performing the experiment we will take one more set of the test tubes that is d1 and d2 d1 is the duplicate of t1 d2 is the duplicate of t2 so here to take the similar sample of t1 and t2 i had to make it sure that the readings what we got for t1 and t2 is same where it is not going to differ from the t1 reading or t2 reading so that the sample reading is not going to be erroneous further in the second step we are going to add the volume of alpha amino acid in ml where the blank will remain whereas the standard series is going to get 0.5 increments where 0 0.5 1 1.5 2 2.5 ml of the alpha amino acid solution will be taken whereas in the sample test tubes samples to be estimated will be taken as 0 0.5 and 1 ml now further the standard series is going to show 12.5 micrograms of the alpha amino acid present in 0.5 ml it is also going to be the increment of 12.5 microgram of the alpha amino acid as 12.5 25 37.5 50 and 62.5 for the standard series whereas for the samples we have to calculate the same now after taking this standard series and the samples further we are going to make up the volume to 4 ml with distilled water so we are going to add 4 ml to the blank the distilled water to the blank and for the rest of the standard series test tubes we are going to add the remaining amount or we are going to make up it to the 4 ml like for 0.5 ml of the standard series we are going to add 3.5 ml of distilled water here the 3 here the 2.5 here the 2 here the 1.5 ml of distilled water whereas for the samples also we are going to add 3.5 and the 3 ml of the distilled water further we are going to add 2 ml of ninitrine reagent to all the test tubes including the blank now here blank blank is also going to get the ninitrine solution whereas the blank is all already has the 4 ml of the distilled water only distilled water not the standard series solution or the sample solution so blank now has only the 4 ml of distilled water and the 2 ml of the ninidrin reagent and also the standard series and samples are also going to get 2 ml of the ninidrin solution or the reagent now we are going to mix the contents very well and we are going to keep uh, under the boiling water bath for incubation for about 15 minutes then we are going to add 1 ml of alcohol that is the 
diluent to all test tubes including blank further we are going to add 4 ml of distilled water to all test tubes here this last step last step you can avoid if you are going to have a less intensity color development here when you are going to add the ninitrine itself and when you are going to keep it for incubation here itself the development of the color will takes place so when you are going to add this alcohol and if there is the less intensity of the color development so the color development is not avoiding the correct reading measurement in the calorimetry then you no need to add the distilled water so if the high intensity of the color has been developed then you can dilute the sample where the sam uh, i mean the whatever the standard series and the samples where uh, it is going to give some more relaxation or dilution in the intensity of the color so you can read the absorbance at 570 nanometer so after that you are going to get these kind of readings depending upon what the amount of the amino acids has been taken in the standard series and also in the samples now further these readings will be subjected to the graph with the amount of the amino acid has been taken in the standard series so let me discuss in other slide in this slide we have considered this is the amount of amino acid in micrograms this is the absorbance at 570 nanometer now this is this is the standard series this is the standard series absorbance this one is the blank and this rest is the series and the absorbance and further is this t1 and t2 is the samples and it, this is the absorbance of the sample we have removed the d1 and d2 because d1 and uh, d2 is showing the similar readings so by keeping in mind the similarity of the absorbance we have removed d1 and d2 now further always remember a standard graph will be drawn to know the amount of the amino acid in the sample by plotting the standard series on it and whereas we are going to plot the absorbance or the od optical density on y-axis where concentration on x-axis concentration of the standard series that is the amino acid concentration in microgram and further graph helps to identify the amount of the alpha amino acid you can take glycine or you can take any alpha amino acid for the estimation so with the help of this graph you are going to what to identify the amount of the alpha amino acid present in the unknown solutions now when you are going to consider this graph in this this is the absorbance scale and this will be the concentration of amino acid glycine in micrograms now whatever the standard series we have taken when you are going to subject in the graph that is going to the concentration is going to fall here on the x-axis so it has been scattered between 0 to 80 here as we have taken to 0, 0 to 62.5 that the same has been scattered here but when you are going to come to the absorbance scale the absorbance scales will be the range of distribution between 0.05 to 0 0.4 because here 
the absorbance what we have got is from 0 0.07 which is greater than 0 0.05 so it is going to be between 0 0 is here in the corner that is the at the intersection of the x and y axis 0 to 4 in the distribution of the absorbance scale is going to take place now when you are going to subject these values and here the curve linear curve is going to develop on the basis of this particular absorbance now that is going to develop according to the amount of the amino acid in micrograms which is on the x-axis here as we have discussed from 0 to 80 on the x-axis now when you are going to consider you can see the line curve is showing 0 0.07 and 0 0.14, 0 0.21, 0 0.29 and 0 0.35 so this is the absorbance what we have got at 570 nanometer now when you are going to consider the samples T1 and T2 T1 has shown the absorbance of 0 0.06 which you can see here which is from the y axis so it is going to fall on the line curve at this particular point and the perpendicular falls to the down now here when the perpendicular is going to fall to the down you have to calculate the amount of the amino acid is present in the sample now when you are going to consider the amount here so here when you are going to consider at exactly here if the perpendicular is going to fall and when you are going to consider here at this particular point this major line grid line is going to show the 20 micrograms of the amino acid so here when you are going to consider each minor line is going to contribute about 4 micrograms so from 1 and 2 it is 8 micrograms 1 will be 4 micrograms and second will be 8 micrograms and third will be 12 micrograms so here when it is the 0 0.06 and the 0 0.06 is going to fall perpendicular just before to the 12 micrograms minor grid line so here it is going to be the 11 micrograms because from this minor grid line to this minor grid line it is 4 micrograms so the distribution is going to be the 4 micrograms so if you are going to consider the 3 by 4th part hence it has been the perpendicular has fallen after 3 by 4th part of this particular space it should be 11 micrograms in the same manner for T2 it is 0 0.01 absorbance the line of intersection is going to fall the perpendicular exactly on the major grid line which is 20 micrograms so the amount of the amino acid in the t2 sample is 20 micrograms now when you are going to consider further calculation we are going to do the calculation on the basis of the amount of the volume of the sample has been taken now here in the 0.5 ml of the given unknown solution the 0.5 ml of the given unknown solution is the t1 sample where it contains the 11 micrograms of the glycine so this ha has to be calculated for 100 ml of the given sample it will be 11 divided by 0 0.5 into 100 where the calculation is going to give 2200 micrograms of glycine if it is converted to milligrams 2.2 
milligrams of glycine in the same manner for t2 sample which is of 1 ml it is going to show 20 micrograms of glycine whereas if you are going to calculate it for 100 ml it is going to give the calculation of 20 divided by 1 into 100 and further it will be 2000 micrograms if it is converted to milligrams it will be 2 milligrams of glycine so this is the calculation and also the result now i hope i have been very clear with the experiment and uh, and i hope i have given all the information which has to be produced presentation now further we have given one more table that even you can use it and uh, you can make the readings of the absorbance in your labs and also you can give the conclusion if when you are going to get this particular results and uh, thank you for tuning the learners big book and i request at your good self to subscribe to our channel the learners big book on youtube and also the learners big book on facebook we are very hard working to get the better content we are now covering the experiments itself if you have any experiments that has to be covered and we are ready to serve please uh, put out the experiment title and uh, please be updating us and also be in contact after giving the request uh, that uh, so that we can have good conversations to make or cover the things at the earliest because uh, many of the candidates are requesting us for the different experiments where uh, those experiments are difficult to get on the websites we are trying to do our best but we don't want to throw the stone in the air by giving some nonsense content so if after you requesting the contents please be in regular touch so that we can give you the better output so even it will be good for us to learn from you guys and also to learn more and uh, hopefully i am very clear in this particular ninhydrin method if you have any doubts or any questions if anywhere we have gone wrong please mention in the comments so that uh, we can come across and rectify the mistake thank you very much